These data really started 14 years ago at this ASH meeting when we presented data showing that young adults ages 16 to 20 who were treated on adult cooperative oncology adult cooperative group studies in the United States fared much worse than the same age group who were treated on pediatric studies. And that became a very important question to many in the world of ALL therapy. And others around the world found exactly the same results, that young adults who were treated on pediatric trials fared much better when compared to adults who were young adults, same age, who were treated on adult oncology group studies. So over the years, we developed a protocol that was taken exactly from a pediatric group study, and we applied it to what we define as the young adult population, ages 16 up to age 40, on a United States cooperative group study. And so we were asking the question whether adult hematologist oncologists could achieve similar results in a slightly larger age range using a pediatric protocol. We hope to describe the toxicities and compare these with outcomes of young adults ages 16 to 29 years old who are treated on an identical arm of a pediatric protocol and to analyze these outcomes by presenting biological features, which I'm presenting today. We also want to analyze a patient and physician adherence, since we believe that this is also a very important factor in outcome, and outcomes based on psychosocial characteristics of the patients. Those data are not going to be presented at this meeting. They're still undergoing analysis. So this is the regimen. As I mentioned, it is taken identically from one arm of a pediatric cooperative group study. And it is using a pediatric regimen, which is particularly intense in the use of very standard, very established drugs, including glucocorticoids, vincristine, and pegylated form of asparaginase, very intensive uh, therapy to the central nervous system, and prolonged maintenance therapy. Um, and this was identical to a pediatric trial, but applied to young adults by pediatric hematologists, oncologists. We entered 318 patients over a period of about five years, and of those, 296 were eligible for uh, analysis. The ethnic uh, distribution is shown on the slide here. Importantly, uh, Hispanic patients have a higher frequency of ALL, and 16% uh, of those enrolled on this study were of Hispanic or Latino uh, um, origin. 61% of the patients were male, and the median age of the study was 25 years with the distribution as shown here. The majority of patients were between the ages of 20 and 29 years. Most of the patients were in quite good shape when they started treatment. Importantly, one of the questions about toxicity with adult, with pediatric regimens applied to adults is whether or not if you're a heavy person, you can tolerate these regimens. And, uh, Amazingly, possibly sadly, in the United States, uh, almost a third of our patients had an elevated body mass index, and 7% were morbidly obese. These are the results. I'm not going through the toxicity data today in the interest of time, but I'm happy to talk about that later. The event-free survival at two years, which is still early follow-up, is extremely much better than what we have seen in historical controls, and it's 66% event-free survival at two years for all patients, where a, and overall survival is 79% uh, on the study to date. This is with a median follow-up of about three years now. So in conclusion, we noted that the pediatric regimen administered by adult hematologist oncologists was validated in a large North American intergroup trial. We had on-schedule accrual, low treatment-related mortality. I want to emphasize that our overall mortality was identical to that applied by the pediatricians with the same regimen. The event-free survival of 66% and overall survival of 79% is a significant improvement compared to the 34% event-free survival in the historical controls in our previous cooperative group study, but longer follow-up is needed to validate these results. Our outcomes are very similar to other prospective international studies which applied pediatric regimens to young adult population of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. 
Um, we also looked at some biological factors, which are very interesting. I'm not going over those data in specific today, but uh, the presence of a specific genomic signature called the BCR able one like signature and overexpression of a particular gene called CRLF2 is common and associated with a significantly worse survival in these patients. And in a multivariable analysis, aberrant expression of this one gene, CRLF2, was associated with both worse event-free and overall survival. Absence of minimal residual disease following induction therapy, which we'll present data on, similar to what Dr. Wood presented, was associated with excellent disease-free and overall survival. And based on these data, we in the U.S. cooperative groups are going to use this regimen as a foundation for future studies where we hope to add new targeted antibodies and new, or not new, but newly applied kinase inhibitors uh, to eradicate minimal residual disease, which we have shown to be a very important factor, and we hope that that will result in further improvements in survival for this group of patients.